Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Elder Scrolls 6 discussion series. In this video we will be discussing weapons and armor and the changes that we will hopefully see. Weapons and armors that will be reintroduced, more unique weapons, more weapon variety and variations and unique skins. Now remember this Elder Scrolls 6 discussion series is just my ideas and thoughts on these particular subjects and basically the things I would like to see in the Elder Scrolls 6. And of course be sure to leave your feedback back in the comments because of course we're going to be doing the rediscussion series where I'll go through and pull all of your feedback from the comments and then basically make a video showing all of your ideas so you guys can have a voice within the Elder Scrolls 6 community as well. So be sure to let me know all of your feelings on all of these topics. Okay so first up I would like to see a comeback for the durability system. We saw it in Morrowind and Oblivion and it was taken out of Skyrim. The durability system being, if you find a weapon, it's got 100% durability, you go out fighting monsters, killing stuff for 4 hours, it's going to lose durability, so you'll need to repair the weapon. Same goes for armor, if you're getting smacked around by trolls, your armor is going to lose durability, it's going to lose armor rating, and lose value in the process as well, but then of course it can be repaired. In previous games, I think it was called Armorer. There was actually an actual skill for repairing weapons and armor. I don't think they should bring the skill back, but it could very easily be um, implemented into the smithing skill line. Again, it's not necessary to bring back, but it's just a very nice kind of realistic touch. I should also just note that if I say make an example and I'm using weapons as an example, the topic that I'm talking about will apply to both weapons and armor. So any example I give, you can apply to both armor and weapons. Unless it's something specific, like this. I would like them to bring back medium armor. We saw it in Morrowind, we saw it taken out of Oblivion, and we didn't see it return in Skyrim. It was still absent in Skyrim. Although Elder Scrolls Online isn't a direct correlation or part of the Elder Scrolls series in terms of, you know, Elder Scrolls 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, in the Elder Scrolls Online, we did see a comeback for medium armor, so hopefully they will re-implement medium armor in the Elder Scrolls 6. Some of the reasons I would like to see medium armor come back, this will just give the players the option of character customization. Uh, medium armor has the benefits of both heavy and light armor, it has moderate armor and a moderate weight. So it gives players more room to make weight sacrifices, yet to keep a fairly good armor rating, or vice versa. Now they need to bring back more weapons, specifically more types of weapons, in this example anyway. I mean, in Morrowind, we had throwing stars, you could literally like sneak around jumping from roof to roof, throwing ninja stars, assassinating people while sneaking. We had throwing knives. Again, you could run into a town just flinging knives everywhere, taking people out. It's much faster than shooting a bow as well. You can just be flinging knives everywhere. We had freaking darts, man. You could run around with darts, run into a bar, just dart everyone right in the face. If you want a ninja character, I tell you what, you should get really pumped for these weapons. Again, who knows if they're going to bring them back, they probably won't, but... I really, really hope that they do. A lot of the stuff in this video is mostly about player choices. Having more choices for character customization. Again, having them in Morrowind didn't mean you had to use them, but they were there as a choice. You could choose to use them or not. And to be honest, the first time I ever used throwing knives, throwing stars, or darts as a weapon in Morrowind was to film this video. And let me tell you, I had some fun, man. I was sneaking around towns, jumping from roof to roof, just fweeing throwing stars into people's necks. It was great. Now, the kind of weapon variation or the adding of weapon types that I want to see does not end there with throwing stars and darts. So let's take a look at the array of Daedric weapons from Skyrim. So we have the Daedric arrows. We have Daedric bows. We had Daedric daggers. We had Daedric swords. We had Daedric great swords, we had Daedric war hammers, we had Daedric maces, we had Daedric battle axes, and finally we had Daedric war axes. So there we have nine different types of Daedric weapons. Okay, so nine different types of Daedric weapons there. Now, let's take a look at the Daedric weapons from Morrowind. We have Daedric arrows, we have Daedric bows, we have Daedric darts, we had Daedric clubs, we had Daedric war hammers, we had Daedric maces, we had Daedric battle axes, we had Daedric war axes, we had Daedric daggers, we had Daedric short swords, we had Daedric long swords, Daedric claymores, Daedric spears, Daedric Wakazashis, Daedric Dai Katanas, Daedric Tantos, Daedric Katanas, and Daedric Staves. That's 18. 
different types of Daedric weapons that we had in Morrowind compared to the nine that we had in Skyrim. It's literally double the amount of weapon choice in Morrowind. What the hell happened to all these weapons, man? What happened to the weapon choice? Who cares if you don't use half of them? They are there as an option, they're there as a choice. I really didn't like how refined some of Skyrim's options were. And even as refined as they were, half of the stuff I didn't use and I mean, half of the weapons that we could find in Morrowind and can't find in Skyrim, I did want to use, like the die katanas, the spears, the darts, the tantos. I mean, come on Bethesda man, like put these weapons back in, what happens? In the lore, all of these different weapon types magically vanished. It's just silly, and it limits what the play can do. So yes, I don't know if you gathered from that, but I would love to see the weapon range and variety reintroduced. If not more, give us triple the amount of weapons we could find in Morrowind. And I don't want them to have to limit the weapon choice because of the skill system. They should be changing the skill system to work with the huge variety of weapons, not give us 9 choices in weapon so it fits with the skill system. Give us 40 choices of weapons. And even if half of them are shit and you never use them, the choice is there. The option is what is important, being able to choose a lighter weapon for only a slight damage loss or choosing a slightly heavier weapon for the same damage but double the durability. There's all kind of very helpful and sensical mechanics that can be implemented with more weapon choice. So weapon variation is very important to me, it's a very important thing that Skyrim lacked and I would love to see brought back. Now we're going to be moving on and talking about armor slots, literally the amount of different slots or locations on your player's body where you can wear different types of armor. Now in Skyrim we have boots. We have the chest piece which covers the legs and the shoulders. We have gloves or gauntlets. We have a head piece. We have one ring slot, one necklace slot. And if we are using a one handed weapon, we can wear a shield. So assuming that you have one hand free, you can be wearing boots, chest piece, gloves, helmet, ring, necklace and shield. Now. Once again, let's take a look at Morrowind's armor slot system. You could wear a shirt, you could wear pants, you could wear a belt, you could wear a ring, you could wear a second ring. Because let's face it, you have 10 fingers or 8 fingers and 2 thumbs. You could wear one necklace, you could wear boots, greaves, you had the left hand and the right hand, the left pauldron and the right pauldron, the chest piece the headpiece, the shield even with a two-handed weapon. You could use a two-handed weapon with the shield still equipped. You couldn't block with a shield while wielding a two-handed weapon, but the shield would still be equipped to your character, adding that extra armor. It would go on your back. And then you could wear a robe over all of it. So in Morrowind, even with a two-handed weapon, we had 16 armor slots, including the shield and the jewelry. In Skyrim, we had four actual armor slots, then the two jewelry, and then a shield, if you had one hand free. That's seven armor slots, including jewelry and shield, with the sacrifice of only having one hand available. Now, this annoyed me a lot. Most of this change was implemented into Oblivion. When they cut the character item slots, I think more than half. Just listen to this. In Skyrim, they made the shirt slot, the robe slot, the left pauldron, the right pauldron, the belt, the greaves, the pants, and the chest armor into one slot. That is f***ing disgusting. Shirt, robe, left pauldron, right pauldron, belt, greaves, pants, and chest armor. They made eight armor slots into one slot. Talk about character customization. Ugh, you got a choice of four types of armor to wear. Boots, greaves, helmet, and chest piece. That's not very customizable. You can't create a unique character with those kind of limitations. That's disgusting. Bring back the freaking armor slots. Let us be able to customize our characters more, please, for the love of God. With such limited armor slots, all you do is funnel every single character into wearing the same stuff at endgame. Because there wasn't enough armor choices, there wasn't enough weapon choices for heavy armor and light armor. For any weapon slot, there was always the best weapon or the best armor. 
and at the end, everyone would be wearing the same shit because it was the best and because there was no room to customize, to chop and change, to really make your character feel unique. I mean, let's face it, how many people's characters at Endgame are running around in dragon bone armor or dragon scale armor? And even if you're not, you're then making sacrifices for not wearing the best armor, which is pretty gross. Obviously, there's going to be armor better than others, but I would like to see a choice at Endgame when they say, you know, six swords that are all equally as good and all equally the best for different reasons. Instead of everyone always ending up with the same weapon because it reigns king over all the others. Now, this gets us into leveled weapons. Leveled weapons and armor. Leveled weapons and armor are absolutely sickeningly disgusting and law destroying. Leveled weapons and armor stink. Dink. They should burn the witch who introduced this rubbish. You happen to stumble across the best weapon in the game at level 10. When you receive it, you'll get it. But with shitty scaled down stats, you are now stuck with these shitty stats and can never actually get the best weapon because you were stuck with this crappy version of it that was scaled to your character at level 10. Yeah, that's really lore friendly. An ancient Daedric artifact. It's made one-fifth of its actual potential, but to get it at its actual potential, you have to acquire it at level 50. So if you actually want all the weapons at their full potential, you have to hold off getting an actually good weapon until you're at the level cap. So when you receive these items, they're at their full potential and not these crappy scaled-down versions. The randomized weapons and armor is disgusting as well. Say when you get the, the Axe of Whiterun. It can be two-handed, it can be one-handed. It's like, are you serious? This is an artifact of Whiterun, yet there's no set weapon for it, you just get a different one every time? Like, what the hell is that? That's not lore friendly, that doesn't help people connect with the axe of Whiterun, when if you're, you know, level 20 you get an orcish axe, or if you're level 5 you get a steel axe, but can there be one-handed or two-handed? It should be the same axe every time, otherwise it's just wishy-washy, there's no lore at all. Same thing goes, I think it was the Blade of the Pale. The Blade of the Pale, I got it was an axe called the Blade of the Pale. Really? That's how far they took the randomization? Every weapon should have set stats, whether you get at level 1 or level 100. It should stand its ground. It should be the same no matter when you get it. It shouldn't change weapon skin or weapon type depending on what level you get it. And I can hear people now saying that getting a really good weapon at say level 5 will give your character a god complex. That's not the issue. The issue is that the game is too easy. Make the game an actual challenge so you need to find these powerful artifacts instead of them giving you this god complex over a, you know, squishy game. And trust me, turning the difficulty up to legendary really doesn't make the game that much harder. And even if it is on legendary, you're still going to be stuck with a shitty version of the weapon at level 10. I really can't pinpoint what the issue is, but again, if you played Morrowinds, I think you'll agree that it is much harder. Even on easy, it's much harder. And you had to find these crazy powerful weapons to survive in a really rough world. And I would love to see that come back. Leveled weapons and armor just ruins the lore. One, changing the stats, it's rubbish. Two, changing the stats so you're then stuck with those stats, that is absolute rubbish. And three, changing the actual skin of an item with a unique name, depending on your character's level. Get out, that is, what the f what were they thinking? Make the quests for these items hard. Make it so you have to put the hard yards in to get these items. Not just follow the quest marker, kill some trolls, go back and he gives you some crazy weapon. Make it a challenge, and make the rest of the game a challenge so you need these weapons and armor. I wouldn't even soul trap the guy that made leveled weapons and armor. Be a shitty soul gem. He'd probably scale down my enchantment anyway, fuck him. Okay, now I would like to see an overall weapon and armor variety. We saw it in the Elder Scrolls Online, an iron sword. There's 15 different styles, different racial styles that an iron sword can come in. And also having a set skin for say an iron sword is very unlawful. Friendly. Let's say, for example, a Khajiit is coming across the border into Skyrim. It's not like there's a sword exchange where they hand over their weapons and then are then given a Nordic looking weapon. No, the Khajiit will have a Khajiit styled weapon. Just like in the Elder Scrolls Online, each weapon type has a different style. It makes complete sense and adds a rich depth to the game, again adding to character customization. 
Even if it's the same weapon, it has 15 different skins, 15 different ways it can look. The weapon and armor, customization, variety, choice, it would be incredible. Just think if you made a character that was a Khajiit warrior, you could have Khajiit styled armor and weapons. It has the same stats, it's the same name, but it's got a different style, it has a different look to reflect your race that your character's playing. If you so choose, it could be a Khajiit in Argonian styled armor. It's your choice. So I definitely would love to see that kind of thing implemented into the Elder Scrolls 6. Okay, so armor variety. Again, would love to see more of it. So in Skyrim, the different armors we had was Ancient Falmer, Chitin, Dragon Scale, Dawn Guard, Elven, Elven Gilded, Elven Light, Forsworn, Fur, Glass, Hide, Imperial Light, Leather, Penitus Oculatalis, Scaled, Shrouded, Skull, Stalhrim, Stormcloak, Stormcloak Officers, Studded, Studded Imperial, Thieves Guild, and Vampire Royal Armor. That's all the light armor. And then for heavy armor, we had the Ancient Nordic, Bandit Iron, the Blades, Bone Mold, Daedric, Dawnguard Heavy, Dragon Plate, Dwarven, Ebony, Falma, Falma Heavy, Imperial, Iron, Nordic Carved, Orcish, Steel, Steel Plate, and Wolf. Then for Morrowind, we had the Light Armor, Boiled Netch, Chitin, Glass, Imperial Studded Leather, Imperial Newt Scale, Netch Leather, Nordic Bearskin, Nordic Fur, Snow Wolf, and Wolf Armor. For Medium Armor, we had Adamantium, Amunan, Bone Mold, Bear, Dre, Gudjulan, Bone Mold, Ice, Imperial Chain, Imperial Dragon Scale, Indoril, Nordic Ringmail, Orcish, Royal Guard's Arm, and Snow Bear. And then for Heavy Armor, we had the Daedric, the Duke's Guard Silver, Dwimmer, Ebony, Her Hands, Imperial Silver, Imperial Steel, Imperial Templar Knight, Iron, Nordic Iron, Nordic Mail, Nordic Trollbone, and Steel. So as you can see there, between Skyrim and Morrowind, we've got a pretty big armor selection. So wouldn't you like to see something like that, a number like that, in the Elder Scrolls 6 as an armor selection? How about four times that? Yeah, it looks pretty damn good. I will take the number of Skyrim's armor and the number of Morrowind's armor times four, please. I would like to see that in the Elder Scrolls 6. Also, I would like to see options on the same level. Have six armors that have the same armor rating. Maybe they've got a little bit less, but they're much lighter. More armor rating, but they're heavier. Same armor rating, but they're heavier, but they have more durability. Same armor rating, but they're lighter, but have less durability. Make their options. Make them just as good, but for different reasons. I'd like to see different options instead of just going straight to Orcish. If there was like three different armor choices that were all just as good, but for slightly different reasons. And then of course times that by three with light armor, medium armor, and heavy armor, and you've got a pretty healthy variety of armor choice on your hands. I'd really, really love to see something like that. Okay, this next thing, this is a very important thing to me. Again, this applies for both weapons and armor, but I'm gonna use weapons as an example here. So I would love to see more unique skins. I understand Bethesda has a lot more on their plates than unique weapon and armor variety, but still, I mean, come on. Okay, so I have taken the liberty of selecting seven, seven unique swords from Skyrim. Unique swords, unique names, unique enchantments. Wow, unique weapons. Firstly, the Ceremonial Sword. Secondly, Edu. Thirdly, Golder Blackblade. Fourth, Jati's Sword. Fifth, Red Eagle's Bane. Sixth, Red Eagle's Fury, 7th, The Pale Blade, wow, talk about a way to kill excitement for unique weapons, they all have the exact same skin! I would like to see completely different skins, but if they're not gonna do that, how about you just make the handle longer on one of them, make the blade thinner, make the blade longer, make the handguards different, put a different pattern up the blade, change the freaking color of the blade, how hard is that? I've done 3D modeling, it does not take that long to change the color of a surface. At least it didn't for the shitty thing I was building. Like, come on, man. They're not all going to look the same. More weapon and armor variety! Even just changing the color. They have done this once, as far as I'm concerned, or aware, I should say, with Chilrend. What they did, a glass sword is normally green. They got Chilrend and made it a light blue. 
this works. It works. Chill red. Icy. It's ice blue. They got a glass sword and made it ice blue. It works. It makes sense. It fits. It's simple. And yet they've only done it once. It's a very simple yet effective way to make a weapon feel special and unique. The name works. The way of the sword looks works with the name. It works with the enchantment. It's got lore behind it. People know it and love it. And more unique skins is very important for this as well. I understand that they can't make unique skins for every item, but I mean, why not? However, it brings a depth, a level of detail, and creates character for the weapons and armor as well. With the amount of history and culture, different influences from other parts of Tamriel, ancient Dwemer, ancient magical artifacts, they should make these beautiful elements of the Elder Scrolls lore shine through these item varieties. It's something that was definitely lacked most in Skyrim. It was lacked a bit in Morrowind. Oblivion was kind of in between Morrowind and Skyrim, but for me, I felt that Skyrim lacked the most of this kind of unique skin stuff. Another way to make items look unique is unique enchantment effects. The only weapon I can think of from Skyrim that had a standout enchantment was the sword Dragonbane. Every other weapon, you pull it out, it kind of glows a bit, that's as far as the enchantment goes. But with Dragonbane, you pull it out and there is like actual lightning, electricity all over your blade. Why haven't they done this for so many items? Flames, poison, ice, even just weird magical particle effects. Do something to give these like a magical depth to them. Making it glow a bit weird, eh, that doesn't really do anything for me. Dragon Bane, that looks sick. That's got lightning shooting out of it. Physical appearance, name, and enchantment appearance are all incredibly important for building a character for a unique weapon. It should also reflect the weapon's history, what it's used for, and the enchantment on the weapon. They should all work together to give character to a specific item. So you you remember the weapon, you remember the name, you remember what it looks like. Like with these seven ancient Nordic unique swords here. From this picture, you can't tell which one's which, because they all look the freaking same. If you give them unique skins, you can just look at them instantly and go, I know exactly what sword that is. And that is something that I would love to see come back, or to be brought forward and used more than they ever have before. Lastly, in general, I would like to see a comeback of more of our favorite artifacts from older Elder Scrolls games, and introducing new ones as well. With all the heavy and dense lore, and the huge history and amount of time that's passed, the hugely varying cultures, races, histories, gods, and religions, I would put money down that there are a vast number of undiscovered artifacts, and I, for one, would certainly be interested in finding them. So let's recap, I'd love to see durability come back, it just adds realism to weapons and armor losing durability when you fight with them or you get hit by, you know, a bear smack so you're gonna lose durability on your armor. Bring back medium armor, again, brings back character customization, uh, bring back more weapons, bring back the throwing stars, bring back, love to see crossbows come back and not in a DLC, I just want to see them come back straight up, bring back throwing knives, bring back darts, implements, new weapons like throwing spears, bring back spears, just like when I gave the examples with the Daedric weapons, bring back those other nine weapons. I really want to see the armor slots come back again. It makes you chop and choose options, options, options. Instead of being stuck with this freaking eight, eight slots being funneled into one chest slot. Yuck. Leveled weapons and armor. That's rubbish. Get rid of it. Overall armor and weapon variety. Like we said with the armors, I showed you Skyrim's armor, showed you Morrowind's armor. Let's combine those. And then let's, you know, times it by four. Give us four times the amount of armors. Ah, I would also like to see the different types of armors, like we can see in the Elder Scrolls Online, where the iron armor has 15 different styles, depending on what style you apply to it when you craft it. If you kill an Argonian that's just coming in for Black Marsh, they're going to be wearing Argonian-styled armor. Even if it's still iron armor, has the same stats, it'll have a different look. It'll look like Argonian armor. It'll add such a variety and depth and customization to your character, you guys won't know what to do with yourselves. Items that we love that we're familiar with make them shine make new unique items that we find make them shine make us remember them make the name reflect the skin really handcraft and put some thought into the skins and enchantments for these unique items instead of repeating seven times the exact same freaking skin with seven different unique swords that in my opinion is very lazy like i said looking at this page right here point out edu exactly 
they all look identical. Many more unique items with unique skins, unique enchantments, and unique enchantment effects. More skins for the same base armors and base weapons. More armor slots. Bring back medium armor. And also bring in new armor types. Like six times the amount of types of armor that we had in Skyrim. Do it. Bring it in. You'll really be able to build a unique character for yourself. Every playthrough, you will be playing a completely different character that for different reasons is just as good as your other characters characters while using completely different weapons and armor. And that is about as much as I can talk about weapons and armor in one sitting. So I would like to thank you very much for listening to that. Now, be sure, because this series is very important for us as a collective for the Elder Scrolls community, be sure to share this video around so as a community we can together bring forward the best ideas and thoughts we have as a collective and we can present them here. These are my initial thoughts, so let me know your thoughts on my thoughts. And then once the series is done, of course, we're going to be doing the rediscussion series where I will go through all of the, uh, like, for example, the weapons and armor video that you've just watched. I'm going to go through all of the comments, take your ideas, select the good ideas, even the uh, ideas that I don't agree with but are quite common, or ideas that are outside the box, even if I don't think they're a good idea. The rediscussion video is specifically to give you guys a voice. It's all about you guys. This video is all about my ideas. You can agree, disagree, whatever. Reflect your ideas on this video, on this specific topic, and then when the rediscussion video comes up, I will talk about your ideas, what you want to see. So it is very important, not just for me or you you but as a whole community to put your ideas and thoughts into this so hopefully on some level we can have some kind of influence and some degree in terms of what they implement into the Elder Scrolls 6. So please, it is vital and important that you guys put in your ideas, and I am extremely grateful for it. As you can see on screen, you can click the previous button to go to the last video that I did, or you can click the next button to go to the next video that I do. Once the rediscussion video is done for this topic, I will put the link over the rediscussion button just there, or you can click on the playlist button which will take you to the playlist of all of the Elder Scrolls 6 discussion videos that I've done, so you can pick and choose on which videos you want to watch, if that is your desire. And of course, just any thoughts you have about the weapons and armor in the Elder Scrolls 6, be sure to let me know. Um, the next video that I'm going to be doing is probably the crafting system within the Elder Scrolls 6, uh, which does tie in a lot with weapons and armor, so be sure to check that out. But I specifically didn't talk a lot about crafting with weapons and armor in this video because there's going to be a separate video for crafting. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, share this video amongst your family and friends and the Elder Scrolls community, of course, and don't forget to leave a comment. And as always, if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot and it helps me continue doing this stuff, which hopefully in the long run will benefit us as a Elder Scrolls community. So again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video or the last video. See you later. i